we are verging on another nuclear arms race. I do not think it's irreversible. So it's, this is the time to stop and reflect, debate the issue, and see if there's some third choice, some alternative between doing nothing and between having a new arms race. The issue now is about trust, building trust, confidence among states. What I would tell the people, science has driven diplomacy, and the CTBT has been an example of that. We're very proud that South Africa took the step of getting rid uh, of its nuclear weapons voluntarily. But in order for us to ensure that there's peace throughout the world, the most powerful countries in the world, which are holders of large stocks of nuclear weapons, need to also lead by example, as South Africa did. Let us build on the scope of what we have already achieved to realize a world at peace, a peaceful world for future generations. This is a very uh, important treaty for all of us to have a secure and a more peaceful uh, world. It is astonishing that they have been able, in a relatively short period of time, to put together this monitoring system that can detect the presence of all evidence of nuclear explosions in the atmosphere, underwater, um, and even underground. People need to know that this is the case beyond the scientific community, but the scientific community has a responsibility to tell those who do not know and understand how, how it works. It's truly my honor and great privilege to be part of this great effort to further strengthen the relationship between the scientific and technological community and the CTBTO. It is important to allow scientists to look at our data to help us move the frontiers of the technology that we've developed beyond what we do. Even if the data was meant initially to do nuclear test monitoring. And people need your data. And then you tell them you can't have my data because it's confidential. What they will do is to try and build the same technology to get the data because you can't stop scientists from working. Nous développons un, un projet qui s'appelle RISE, Atmospheric Dynamics Research Infrastructure in Europe, et qui consiste à utiliser les données du réseau euh, du CTBT, le euh, réseau Infrason, avec euh, d'autres réseaux complémentaires. Et l'objectif, c'est de mieux déterminer, euh, étudier toutes les perturbations de l'atmosphère, du sol jusqu'à la stratosphère, la mésosphère et même la thermosphère, c'est-à-dire du sol jusqu'à une centaine de kilomètres d'altitude, pour mieux comprendre euh, toute la dynamique de l'atmosphère. Avec ces mesures, on pourra euh, améliorer les modèles d'atmosphère et les modèles de prévision météorologique de demain euh, qui peuvent aller jusqu'à plusieurs semaines, voire une saison. Globally, Ghana is very far from the major earthquake zones. However, we have had historical earthquakes dating as far back as 1615. And so we are also using this data, the seismic data actually, to compile a catalog of earthquakes in Ghana. And this we have displayed in our observatory. And so whoever comes there, I mean, is eager to know whether an event has been located in his small area or not. And I think this is actually making people alert. Iceland, we have a volcanic eruption uh, every five years. So one of the responsibilities my office has is to provide warnings. And we had the eruption in 2010, which had a huge effect on the aviation. In August, we had an eruption that was prolonged over six months, uh, only three kilometers away from the glacier. So if it would have come up underneath the glacier, we could have seen uh, an ash plume interrupting the air traffic for six months internationally. What we can provide is information and really a lot of know-how, how to operate a monitoring network in harsh environment. And I think uh, 
vice versa. There's a lot of uh, stuff for us to learn about how to operate monitoring systems in a good way. In a region with high rate of earthquake and historical evidences and well-recorded tsunami events, the Mediterranean is subject to tsunami threat also. Imagine a situation where the beaches are populated with hundreds of thousands of tourists that are not aware of a tsunami and do not know what to do in case of a tsunami early warning message. The region in the Eastern Mediterranean as a whole is subject to various levels of instability. CTBTO, by providing a high quality data with a high rate of data availability to the tsunami early warning systems, is not only contributing to the civil and scientific applications, but is also contributing to the global security. I want the next generation, the young scientists and experts who have come to learn about what we do. I want them to help us think out of the box. I want them to take what is best that we do and help us to move beyond that. We will be hosting an international next generation challenge to find innovative solutions to today's nuclear issues. Being able to move to a world free of nuclear weapons will need to be one of the greatest efforts of the 21st century. And I think our generation, with the proper prodding, can really solve this issue. We have to make this topic more palatable to the younger generation, the current generation, and the generations ahead of us. If you see yourself as an agent of change, um, you act upon things that you feel passionate about. So if it's easy for you to live through other people's lived experiences, especially if they're as inspirational as Dr. Perry and all of the other people that have spoken to us over the course of the week, this can be done as long as people are pushed to make those decisions. And it won't happen unless our generation is educated. So that's why we're here. Science and technology is entirely capable of providing reliable verification of the CTBT. So I am confident in recommending to our government and recommending to our Senate that we ratify the CTBT. The confidence we could have in compliance, I think, is a very high level of confidence. The consequences of not ratifying are pretty predictable and they're, they're uh, all negative.